We take a peek globally, not only what's going on in our country, we're still up, but you know, for most of the day, uh, stocks in London were up before finishing, nominally to the downside. Elsewhere in Europe, all up across the board here. So a sign here that the markets, despite uh, this latest terrorism incident, it was just scary to think about it because it was a soft target expanding to a smaller city target. And a lot of folks are wondering what's next, what could be next, heightened alerts, the globe over. But so far, it's not really whipsawing traders for now, for now. Let's go to Ashley Webster, Market Watchers, Gary Kalbaum, and Aaron Gibbs. Aaron, why is that? What's going on? Well, one of the things we've looked at is there really isn't an economic impact. We don't see companies having a massive impact when it comes to particularly these smaller attacks. Though there obviously is a huge emotional impact, it really has to take something like an all-out war. We're really talking about increased defense spending uh, to have an impact. And we looked at uh, even the S&P 500, and most weeks after an attack, the market is actually up about half a percent since 2010. So the markets, particularly the U.S. markets, really are ready to brush it off unless we see something that affects, affects it somewhere on the fundamentals. I guess that does make a lot of sense, Ashley, if you think about it. But we had a lot of defense-related issues continuing to, to climb, really in response to the Saudi deal that the president scored earlier this week. And maybe that those are just the issues that will do well if we have increased terrorism tension. But what do you make of it all? I think so. Look, I think keep calm and carry on. Um, to Erin's point, she's absolutely right. If it was an economic target that was attacked, a different story. That's not the case. And I think this is a very encouraging sign because if the terrorists know they can launch attacks and cause chaos in the financial markets, we would be in a world of hurt. So I think the market's reacting appropriately. We, we got good corporate profits. I don't want to be crass in the face of horrible terror attack. Uh, the economy seems to be showing a lot of bright signs and the markets are moving along quite well. Thank you very much. Um, again, if they did react to every headline that came out, negative headline like this, we would be in a world of hurt. You know, um, Gary, following from Orlando, of course, no stranger to terrorism incidents itself. I mean, is there a sense that you get talking to people that, you know, we, we're, we're getting used to this sort of thing or we don't seem overly jarred by it? We're right after 9-11, every movement, every development uh, was scrutinized and an excuse to sell. Uh, it's a good point. The more it happens, unfortunately, the more the shock value wears off. You have to remember, markets factor in a lot of things, and, and the main point is this. It's, a, it's an incident. The incident happens. The incident's over. Unless there's something that happens again and again and again and really affects commerce, it is really not going to affect the markets. Now, let me say this. If we were in a bear market for stocks, I think there would be more effect to the downside. But you're in a bullish phase right now, particularly in Europe, which is very strong, uh, as the economy is getting better with all the money printing. That helps also. So I think you have a, a double effect here. Not to mention, I think you got the market with the little uh, certain finger sticking out at the uh, bad guys for doing all this. And I think the market's talking. You know, Aaron, there are outside developments. We'd be naive if we didn't mention them, and you always remind me as well. And I'm looking at the president's budget today and the fact that a lot of his critics say debt on arrival isn't going to go anywhere. But it is a budget that, that, that targets just a limited slice of, of containment and spending, uh, but so the biggest budget this country has ever had. But that it could, it could force a shutdown later on this year, that it's going to get that antsy. Do you share that? Uh, well, you know, we have had come very close to these four shutdowns a few indeed, times. Indeed. And they're always able to kick the can down the road just a little longer <laughs> until, <laughs> until it's actually resolved. So my expectation be, based off of history, they always manage to just have some sort of stopover. There certainly tends to be a little more volatility during that period, uh, some more uncertainty. Uh, but I would, I would be highly surprised if we actually get a shutdown. You know, Ashley, back to the terrorism thing I was thinking, yeah. I think you guys were mentioning it on, on the Stuart Marty show, this idea that it comes at a time when people are looking to go to concerts or they're looking yes. to go to events, even they're looking to fly to Europe. They might be less predisposed to that now, and that is a, an effect and an impact that'll come later. What do you think of that? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Neil. We did talk about that. You know, the kids, parents thinking about kids going to summer concerts. Uh, yet again, do we go to Europe for our vacation this year? These types of things. I think it certainly makes you think twice. We've already heard from Madison Square Garden here in New York that uh, they're re-looking at the way they handle security. And this attack in Manchester was very, very calculated, very cold. The way it was done outside of the uh, arena in the lobby area, 
And this kind of brings questions. We saw an attack in Brussels where it was just outside uh, the terminal in the That's airport right. there. These are the types of things where I think it does make people think twice. And as uh, you know, if you want to go to a concert, you've seen what happened in Manchester last night. I think it does make people think uh, twice about it. Uh Gary, I'm going to shift to the budget stuff and the fact that the administration wants to plan on 3% budget growth. Doable? Uh, absolutely. And I must tell you, Neil, while I was watching the press conference, I turned around to my staff and says, where, I said, where has Mick Mulvaney been all my life? <laughs> it is about time they started caring about the taxpayer. I got to give you one little number. Last month, the taxpayer sent $34 billion to pay just the interest into the toilet. It went to nothing. This is the debt that has been built up by these people that are complaining about trying to cut just a little bit of the growth. Not cutting, just cutting of the growth. It is absolute insanity, and I hope they speak louder, and I hope they fight as, as, as much right. as they can because we cannot go with this trajectory longer. All right, you seem upset, but uh, thank you, seriously, guys. Very good read on all these cross-currents and developments.